YouTube. It is Kim and this is the Back to Basics WLS channel. I have my own channel also under Miss Fantastic. Um, our topic this week is emotional eating. This is probably the sixth time I've tried to make this video because apparently this topic is too difficult for me to discuss. Um, it gets to the core of me and why I'm obese and Frankly, I'll be honest with you, I, every time I come on here to make this video, it, I just get too emotionally distraught. So, I have made the decision, and I hope that you guys will honor it. Um, I just can't. I can't get to my core in this video. I can't talk to you about the deepest part of my soul. I'm just going to have to stay shallow. Sorry. Um, I'm working on it, <laughs> and I, I'm hopeful that a couple months down the road, I'll be stronger and be able to share more personal stuff. But for now, okay, don't get me going. So for now, I am going to intellectualize this topic, emotional eating, um, and just talk about that and get through this video. So I've been reading the Shrink Yourself book by Roger Gould, along with many of my Back to Basics friends. We're only on chapter two, but I have made deep, deep revelations about myself and my emotional eating. Um, the first thing I will say to you, and it's not too deep, is yes, I am an emotional eater. I had no idea the extent of my emotional eating um, until the last couple months. It's been out of control. And ironically, it's out of control because I'm trying to deal with the emotional eating. I'm trying to tackle it. I'm trying to dig deep. I'm trying to really get to the root of what's been happening. And the more I dig, the more I emotionally eat. It's very hard. But I have made a promise to myself that I will get through this book no matter how much I eat. If I eat gallons and gallons of ice cream, I will finish this book. If I gain 20 pounds reading this book, I will finish this book. I'm going to get to the end. <laughs> so having said that, I want to just share with you um, some of the, the important things that have come to me in the first two chapters of the book. Um, that's that's just what I want to do is just share the things I loved about the book and it may or may not um, touch you. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Diet plans and frankly even weight loss surgery implies that you can consciously control your eating habits and deal with life's problems straight on. For emotional eaters this simply is not possible. The urge to eat is too strong. Food has become a powerful psychological tool to avo avoid feelings that are too intense or anxiety provoking. <sighs> this psychological tool is actually more powerful than our willpower. And so that was a very, very important concept for me to grasp because I have always, always, always believed that I was weak and that I had no willpower and that's why I kept eating. And I would beat myself up time and time again. So this was very powerful for me to know that the urge to use food and that psychological tool that I have developed over the last 20 years is stronger than willpower alone. And so it's going to take something a little different than willpower to get to the bottom of that. So that, I wrote that down as something that was important. Um, the next thing, it is so difficult to change the cycle because simply recognizing it does not help. You have to go deep below the surface to new places never explored. That is what I'm doing. That is why this is so painful. I am going to places I've never went before, never wanted to go, which is why I buried my inner heart and my inner soul under all these layers of fat. I didn't want to go to these places. I am making myself go there. Um, so that's why it's so difficult to change the cycle. Okay. You, are th you think you are eating because you feel powerless over food. Yes, that's how I felt. I felt like I wanted the food. The food was calling me. I could not stop from eating the food. I thought it was all about the food. This is really a cover-up for a deeper experience of powerlessness. All right. 
in the first chapter, he talks about the root of all emotional eating comes from a feeling of being powerless in one of five areas. Um, I really, really hated that because one thing I've always hated my entire life is thinking I was powerless. And it's true. I have a lot of control issues. I like to be in control. I have such a hard time with anybody telling me what to do. Um, rules. I have a really hard time with rules. Um, and I do understand from reading this that there are areas that I have felt, felt powerless in. So these are the five areas of powerlessness. One, you feel powerless about how to deal with your self-doubts. Two, you feel powerless about how to get real satisfaction in your life. Three, you feel powerless to ensure your own safety. Four, you feel powerless to appropriately assert your independence. And five, you feel powerless to fill yourself up when you feel empty inside. So, I have been able to identify four out of the five areas of powerlessness for me. I will say, this is where I'm struggling right now. I can identify times in my past when I had these areas of powerlessness and how they may have been the root or the start of my current emotional eating. Um, I can't figure out the current times. I don't get what's happening in my own life right now that's triggering those past feelings of powerlessness. I don't get it. And, um, well, this is the next thing that he talks about, which uh, explains that, and it's what I'm hoping to understand through this process. When a feeling triggers past issues of these powerlessness, uh, you are instantaneously transformed into the uncomfortable urge to eat. You haven't even had time to process the powerlessness or the feeling that triggered it. And so... What's happened over the years is we have finally tuned this coping skill that um, we don't even under, we don't even recognize that we feel powerless. We don't even recognize that there is a feeling that triggered that urge to eat. I just go straight to the urge to eat and I don't really realize something triggered it. And after I'm binging and even when I'm binging, because I know I'm going to go binge. I know I'm going to go get that food. I stop myself and I think, now why are you doing this? What is going on with you that's triggering this? And I can never make that connection. Reading this book, I can go back and identify times in my childhood when I was made to feel powerless. I can see exactly where those roots came from. What I don't understand is how now, as an adult, I'm being triggered to go back there. I don't get that piece. I hope the answers are in this book later, and I'm just not there yet. So I'm going to just end this with saying two other things I wrote down. Um, diets fail because of emotional eating. Um, first, you must focus on what specifically makes you feel powerless in your life. So, um, I do believe that. Diets fail, and frankly, weight loss surgery will fail too. Um, and I've seen it. I've seen so many people gain their weight back. And it's because the weight loss surgery is just a tool. It does not deal with what really caused you to be obese in the first place. And if, if the cause of that is emotional eating, you have no choice but to figure this out or you will gain your weight back. The next thing is you're addicted to the escape that food provides you more than the food itself. That was such a powerful recognition for me. Um, because again, I always think it's the food that's causing it. And um, I, I've, you've heard me say this on several of my videos. I don't think I'm a food addict. And the reason I don't think I'm a food addict is I can go strong for like three weeks before I give in to emotional eating. And I always felt addiction was something that you had this compulsion to do every single day. I didn't think you could really be addicted if you're going three weeks without food. But... Um, this points out that it's not the food itself that I'm addicted to. It is the feeling of numbness from that pain that I'm addicted to. So 
when that triggers, when that emotional stuff triggers me is when I'm addicted to getting rid of that pain and that numbness. So the food really has nothing to do with it. So that's all I really can talk about right now. And I'm sorry for this video. I wish that, um, I wish I could have given you more. Um, but for now, that's just all I'm comfortable doing. So I hope you'll bear with me. Um, I'll be back next week. Thanks. And you guys quit giving us these hard topics. It's making me go too deep. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.